So Motorola, being Motorola, didn't launch just a single flagship phone for 2021. They've launched three of the buggers suiting a range of different budgets and demands. And the most premium of this fresh trio is this wee blighter right here, the Motorola Moto Edge 20 Pro, which will be hit in the UK imminently for 650 quid. So while it is more expensive than the likes of the Billy Big Bollocks Samsung Galaxy S21s, the iPhones, the Sonys, it is going right up against the likes of the OnePlus 9 and the Google Pixel 5. But is it any good? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm going to whip it on out of the box, take you on a full-on tour of the hardware and the software ahead of my in-depth review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Well, first up, you're certainly getting good value for money as far as the box is concerned because it's an absolute beast. So let's see what's inside. Ah, it's two more boxes. So you've got the actual Motorola Moto Edge 20 Pro and then you also get Motorola's Ready 4 cable uh, which allows you to hook up the phone to your TV and basically use it as a makeshift computer. And I did do a demonstration of this feature on my Moto G100 unboxing, so definitely go check that out if you want to know more. Now for the considerably more modest Moto Edge 20 Pro box. So first up, naturally you have the phone. You've got one pop-up 3-pin adapter, Type-C to Type-C USB cable. Bit of porky pin action, lovely stuff. A quick start guide. And the Moto Edge 20 Pro does actually come pre-clad in a condom case as well to keep it nice and safe if you want to. But of course we want our lovely, luscious, premium flagship smartphone to be completely naked. So we can probably check out that gorgeous design if I can actually get this bloody case off. Oh, you bugger, finally. So here is the Motorola Moto Edge 20 Pro in all of its splendor. And first impressions are pretty good. It certainly looks like a Motorola smartphone, helped along by that iconic bit of Brandon on the arse end. But the Moto Edge 20 Pro feels quite light for a premium uh, flagship style smartphone. You've also got some pleasing curves there on the back and around the corners as well. So it feels comfortable to grip, despite the fact it is a 6.7 inch beast. And admittedly, squint as hard as you want. You won't find much in the way of flare or frills here on the Moto Edge 20 Pro, but it's just a very neat, tidy design. You've got a matte glass back uh, with that lovely deep blue hue to it, and that really helps to hide any sort of finger grease or anything. And while the Pro model isn't as skinny as the standard Moto Edge 20, it is certainly still nice and slender. You've got Gorilla Glass 5 protection up front, so not the latest Gorilla Glass Victus, but I do find that that tends to scratch up quite easily anyway. It would be nice to have had Gorilla Glass 6 on here, but whatever. One other feature I was hoping for was full-on IP68 water and dust resistance though, so you could drop it in a pool, a sink, a bath or whatever and not have to worry about it. Sadly, the Moto Edge 20 Pro is IP52 water repellent, so it'll be fine in a bit of a sudden, unexpected summer downpour here in the UK. I'd be definitely don't want to go actually dunking it in water. And let's check out that SIM tray and see exactly what the crack is there. And it looks like quite a lot of uh, flagship smartphones around this sort of price point. You've got support for dual SIM, but sadly no micro SD memory cards to expand that storage. All right, so let's get the Moto Edge all set up, take you on a full on tour. Well, all righties, the Moto Edge 20 Pro is all set up, good to go. And it is your lovely stock clean Android 11 experience as you get with all Motorola blows these days, basically. No clunky launches or anything to speak of, just all the settings you know and love from Google. And unlike many Motorola smartphones, the Moto Edge 20 Pro actually comes with two years guaranteed OS and security updates, which isn't quite as good as some of the competition, like so OnePlus and Google offer more these days, but it's still better than just a, uh, oh yeah, we'll probably upgrade it to Android 12 and then you're basically on your own. And while you do get that stock version of Android, Motorola has chucked in its usual Moto Experiences app, which helps you to customize the smartphone, make it a bit more your own, and also adds in tons of other great features. So for instance, you can quickly and easily come up with your own theme for the device, which allows you to tinker with the likes of the icons, the fonts, and thankfully you can change the grid size through this as well. You've also got Motorola's usual excellent gesture support, lots of fast and easy ways of uh, taking a screenshot, activating that torch. I swear that will never ever get old. You've also got the power touch feature, which sounds like something straight out of the 80s. You've got the power touch. That's nice and easy, just double tap that edge mounted fingerprint sensor. Oh, hang on, if I can get it just right. There we go. And then, oh, it's buggered off again. And then this just allows you to, uh, to uh, and this just brings up a uh, small selection of shortcuts to some of your favorite apps. And of course, you can fully customize exactly which apps pop up in there. And not just apps, it does allow you to fast access some features within apps as well. So for instance, in Deezer, you can jump straight to the play flow 
or the search feature, track a workout on Google Fit and so on and so forth. And back inside the Moto Experiences app, you've also got some tips and tricks for getting the most out of your smartphone. You've got the likes of the peak display and attentive display, which just stops the phone from hibernating uh, when you're using it, for instance. And last up, one of my favorites, definitely the gaming tools as well, which is uh, really, really helpful if you're trying to get a bit of an edge when you're getting your arse handed to you by various annoying teenagers on the likes of Call of Duty Mobile. And yeah, the Moto Edge 20 Pro does have an edge mounted fingerprint sensor as well to go along with the name. It is quite high up that edge though, so it's a little bit awkward to reach, uh, certainly if you've got stubby little fingers like mine. But Touchwood so far seems perfectly responsive, it's not giving me any jip. And you do have a face unlock feature on here as well, uh, so I'm just going to align my face. Face is too blurry. Screw you, Mono. And you've also got the usual lift wake uh, feature and all that as well. So hopefully, just pick up your smartphone, it'll start scanning for your mug. And if your face isn't too blurry like mine, hopefully, it'll be a bit quicker than that. Just try that again. Pick it up, scan for the face. Boom, straight in, that's better. And one of the benefits of picking up the Pro model over the rest of the Edge 20 family is you get 256 gigs of storage packed in here. That's double the amount of the others and it is UFS 3.1, so nice and nippy. But as I mentioned before, no expandability via micro SD. One annoyance here on the Moto, well, the Moto Edge 20 Pro, something that you don't tend to find on a lot of flagship smartphones is the fact that you've got a dedicated Google Assistant button here on the left edge. Now thankfully it's housed rather far up that edge, so touch wood won't go nudging it accidentally. And I'm definitely already very much liking that mighty 6.7 inch OLED panel here on the Edge 20 Pro. It's a full HD plus resolution, not quad HD plus, like some flagship rivals, but still reasonably crisp as well, despite the sheer size of the bloody thing. On the default saturated color settings, nice punchy in your face visuals as well, especially when you're enjoying a nice bit of really bright flashy animation action. There is full HDR10 plus support here, so 10-bit color support and everything as well. Unfortunately, no HDR streaming on the likes of Netflix just yet, but I'm sure that is a feature that will be coming soon. If you jump on into those display settings, you can play around with the color outputs. You can have more natural looking hues if you prefer, although I quite like the saturated level. Uh, and you can also play around with the display refresh rate as well. As you can see, it's set to auto by default, so it will scale up and down depending on what you're actually up to, or you can just have it set to the maximum 144 hertz modes full time, if you like a bit of that. Now, unfortunately, it is only a mono speaker output here on the Moto Edge 20 Pro, just that single downward firing speaker, which is a shame because you get stereo speaker setups on a lot of phones around this sort of price point, even like half the price, but let's bump up the volume, see if it's at least any good. 90 hertz refresh rate, which makes scrolling through apps and menus feel crazy smooth. And yeah, to be fair, it's pretty loud on that top volume and the clarity is pretty good as well. Well, so you could quite happily kick back with a bit of YouTube or whatever in a noisy environment if needs be. But I'd definitely say you want to connect a pair of headphones if you want to really, uh, you know, enjoy a good bit of music or really lose yourself in a podcast or something. Unfortunately, no headphone jack here on the Moto Edge 20 Pro. You don't even get one of those rubbish dongly things bundled in the box if you do want to get a wired connection on the go. So it is Bluetooth all the way. Hopefully it should be a nice, seamless, uh, strong wireless connection when you're wearing a pair of uh, Bluetooth headphones or streaming to a Bluetooth speaker. But I will be testing that out for my full in-depth Moto Edge 20 Pro review. Now running the show here on the Motorola Moto Edge 20 Pro is the Snapdragon 870 chipset from Qualcomm. So it's not the top end Snapdragon 888 or that 888 Plus, which you will find again on some premium flagships around this sort of price point. But that Snapdragon 870 certainly proves perfectly capable for everyday use and even for gaming as well. And here's a good bit of Geekbench action as well for you, all you benchmark fans out there. You'll see that it's got very similar scores to what the Poco F3 spaffed out as well, which also uses that Snapdragon 870. Uh, slightly better on the single core score here, slightly worse on the multi core score, but uh, definitely very strong out and indeed. But of course that Poco F3 is considerably cheaper than the Moto Edge 20 Pro, so if power and performance is your priority, you might want to look there instead. And here on the Edge 20 Pro, that Snapdragon 870 is backed by 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM, so you should have no trouble with lots of apps running in the background, multitasking, all that good stuff. And yeah, it should be good for your gaming as well, so let's get a bit of Genshin Impact on the go and just see how the Moto Edge 20 Pro handles a bit of that on the top detail settings. And as I mentioned before, you've got that excellent Moto Game Time feature as well, which you can just flick onto screen like so, and this serves up all kinds of useful tools like the ability to block calls and notifications, you're not distracted mid-game. You've also got the high performance mode for if you're really going to be pushing uh, the Moto Edge 20 Pro like I'm gonna. You can record the screen, you can play around with the touch sensitivity and you've also got the dark aware feature 
particularly handy for those very moody games where you're stalking about in a haunted house or the likes of Call of Duty Mobile if you're in a really dark area. Just helps to, uh, to boost the brightness a bit so you can see anyone lurking in those shadows. So yeah, I played me a bit of Genshin Impact on those maxed out detail settings, so really resource hungry, it's just as well you've got 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM packed inside of this thing. And with the 60 FPS uh, frame rate as well, so maxed out frame rate, so basically the best possible settings and the gameplay was pretty smooth. The occasional tiny little judder uh, and shake here and there, but really not bad at all considering how many enemies were getting onto the screen at the same time. No notifications popping up on screen to distract me or anything like that. So definitely, yeah, great times all around. And the smartphone didn't start to overheat even after, you know, 20, 30 minutes of non-stop gameplay as well, which is, I guess, one of the benefits of having that 870 rather than that 888. And that Snapdragon 870 chipset boasts a built-in 5G modem and you've got full Wi-Fi 6 support here on the Moto Edge 20 Pro as well. So as far as connectivity goes, it's pretty bloody good. As for the battery tech, well, it's a 4,500 milliamp cell packed inside of the Pro model. So that's bigger than the standard Edge 20 with its 4,000 milliamp. They're not quite as big as the light model's 5,000 milliamp effort. Sadly, there is no wireless charging support here on this Pro model, which again is a feature I would kind of hope to see at this sort of price point. You've got 30 watt wired charging support, turbo power. Unfortunately, not as fast as the uh, 50 watt turbo power, which you've got on the fresh new Moto G60S. Guess I came just a little bit too late for the Edge series smartphones, but hopefully will be incorporated into future flagships. And last up for this Moto Edge 20 Pro unboxing video, let's check out that quad lens rear camera. Now the primary sensor is a 108 megapixel effort. You do have Motorola's usual AI smarts packed on there as well. So it can, for instance, suggest changing to a different feature depending on what your subject is. So if you're snapping a, uh, a gorgeous being like Veronica here, then it'll just say, yeah, switch to that portrait mode, get a good bit of bulky action on the go. You can fast access a whole bunch of toggles and other features just by flicking up a like source. So you can switch on a timer, you can turn the flash on or off. Get the old active photos feature on the go to bring your gallery to life. Unfortunately, Veronica, she's not particularly active, so we don't really need that on the go. And you've got Rosie, loads of other bonus features that you can flick to uh, and play around with, including a night mode for those low light shots. You've got an ultra res mode, which shoots at that maximum 108 megapixels because it's a uh, pixel bidding by default. Mode for all the classics like the old spot color, and you've got a full on pro mode as well if you want to mess around with controls manually. Like so white balance, the brightness levels, and in this pro mode, you can shoot in raw format or also raw and JPEG simultaneously. Now, as well as that 108 megapixel primary camera, you've also got three other lenses on here, including an eight megapixel telephoto lens with five times optical zoom. And so it's built-in image stabilization as well. So don't worry if your hand's trembling a bit, you should still manage to get a fairly steady shot. And I would of course be fully testing that out for my in-depth Moto Edge 20 Pro review. You've also got a uh, 16 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. And you've also got your basic bog standard two megapixel macro mode if you like to get really up close to your subject, really in their face. And if we swap to the video mode as well, pull up that little menu again, you'll see it's shooting at full HD resolution by default at 30 FPS. You've got the full range of uh, frame rates available. Same in 4K as well, you can bump that up to 60 FPS if you like. And there is also an 8K resolution as well, although it looks like you're stuck at 24 FPS with that one. And last up, let's flip around to that 32 megapixel selfie cam, which as you can see there is a, uh, a selfie orifice just stuck there centrally in the screen with a bit of uh, glow and ring action when it's active. And this should hopefully prove absolutely fine for your everyday uh, selfie snaps. And of course, you've got uh, the usual portrait mode and all of that shenanigans as well, if you want to use a bit of that. And that right there in a wee nutshell for you is the fresh new Moto Edge 20 Pro, the most premium of Motorola's trio of flagship smartphones. And so far I am quite liking it as well, even though it is lacking some of those more premium features like the wireless charging, uh, the full on Snapdragon 888 chipset, etc. that you will get on some rival devices. Of course you've got the benefit of that stock Android experience as well, but is the Moto Edge 20 Pro gonna be a rival for the Google Pixel 5 and the upcoming Pixel 6 as well? Well, I've got my SIM stashed in there I will be using it as my full-time smartphone for the next week or so, so stay tuned for my in-depth review. For more of the latest and greatest uh, tech, please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.